Before I start, I would like to give you a little bit of an idea what's going to happen now. Um, I will give you a short overview of the Prozim Zalans Accelerator, show you a little video, because then I don't have to talk so much, and afterwards I would like to take your questions, because I think it's most important that we clarify a couple of things, you know, what is what our accelerator is versus incubators, and so on and so forth. But before we start, I would like to say a big thank you to uh, US Now, actually, to have us here, because I think it's not... You cannot expect it. Basically, we're competitors on the one hand. On the other hand, we're not competitors, and I will elaborate a bit on that, because I believe the biggest challenge we have in the overall German startup ecosystem is that accelerators are not basically the go-to thing for startups, or startups do not necessarily consider going into an accelerator program as they are, for example, in the US or in the UK. So I think it's very good that we all work together with all the different accelerators there are to make the concept of accelerators more popular and more known. And then, in step two, we can battle it out and see you know, what, who gets the best startups and so on and so forth. But we're not there yet, so I believe we're all basically fighting for the same thing. So, and now, um, I would like to show you a little video. Hopefully it works, let's hope for the best. Which is good, it actually works, but no sound. <laughs> Anyone here who can help with the sound or not? No? No sound, no video, very simple. Okay, let's... <laughs> Technology, but I, I'm improvising, so... Maybe Lena comes back, and then I can show you the video afterwards. You just want her to see it, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, because I'm in the video, so, and I love to watch myself. Every morning when I wake up, I watch the video over and over again. <laughs> Get it going. So now let's hope for this thing to work. Mm -hmm. Hey, it does. This is all about boosting your dreams. Um, and not only do we want to boost the dreams of startups that come to our accelerator, but we also want to boost our dreams. Because we started the Posibens Atlantic Accelerator because we wanted to, not because we were recruited to do so or someone else asked us to do it. We thought it's a cool thing. We've seen it in the US, it worked. So about one and a half years ago, we thought, why not give it a shot and start our own accelerator program in Germany? So I asked the board, the board says, great idea, so why not go for it? And that's how we started. And now we are there boosting our own dream and making. Uh, or building a startup within a big corporate organization. So what is the ProSiebenSat Alliance Accelerator? The ProSiebenSat Alliance Accelerator, in contrast to incubators, is a program. It's three months long. After the three months, the startups leave the accelerator again. Of course, the doors are still open. We still talk to them. We're still you know, mentors for them if they want to. But basically, that's it. Three months, you'll learn a lot of things and then you're gone. Versus incubators that usually invest more money, take more equity, and uh, then you stay in it for a longer period of time. So with us, you stay for three months, you get 25,000 euros, you get office space, you get mentoring and coaching from experts from within ProSiebenZ1, from successful entrepreneurs, from industry <coughs> experts, and uh, whoever basically is the right person for you to talk to. So we make sure the right pre uh, people coach you depending on the startup that you're building. And in addition, one of the Posimza Zalans Accelerator teams gets the opportunity to present at the Seven Ventures Pitch Day, um, where you can basically compete for 7 million euros in TV advertising time. And as I already said, we take equity for that, uh, so we take 5% equity, and um, that also makes it more formal, the relationship you have, you can put more demands on us, we can put more demands on you, and uh, it's all a very formal relationship without being formal in uh, terms of reporting or whatever. So what's our investment focus? We invest in both B2C, which is what basically most of you expect, and B2B businesses. Why do we do that? We believe that investing in a company that is promising is the right thing to do. 
and we do it with all companies that we believe we can help. So be it either through the reach that we have within Pro 7 z 1 by, you know, doing some TV commercials or uh, some co editorial coverage uh, for B2C products or B2B solutions that we believe we can use as a company. For example, advertising technology or we've invested in a startup that does social headhunting because we are, we're constantly on uh, searching for new employees. So, you know, all these kinds of things where we believe we know something, uh, things we know uh, something about and uh, things we believe we can help the uh, Start with this. So our portfolio um, consists of 13 companies. We've invested in them over the last 12 months because we've run uh, two batches. Um, we always run two batches a year. And you can see a multitude of logos and I will quickly go through what the companies are actually doing just to uh, pick out a couple of them. We have you know, things that like Dreamer TV that's basically multi-channel network and producers of video content, so something that's very close to our core business. Um, and then we have Talentry as a, uh, the company I mentioned before, the social recruiting software, so B2B uh, software as a service solution. Um, and um, then in the second batch we had companies such as Kinematics, they build robotic toys and uh, to trip uh, that does TV analytics stuff or video stream 360. Uh, they've done a 360 degrees live streaming solution. That's also something that's very close to the <coughs> business that we're doing. But we are basically investing in all different kinds of companies, uh, the ones that we believe are most promising. So how do we measure success? Um, because that's very complicated. Because to be very open with you in the end, it's all about you know, making money in one way or the other. But it's not only the equity value that is important to us because therefore you have to wait for, I don't know, five years and then you get the first returns when you exit some of the companies. So until then you're basically blindfolded and you don't really know how successful your program is. So what we have as our KPIs basically is what's the immediate follow-up investment rate that we uh, secure for the startups that are in our program. And so far, we've almost had 70% uh, of direct follow-up investments in the startups, and the remaining 30% are, you know, very promising conversations with investors, or they don't need as much capital because they've already had capital they brought in themselves. In addition, we've seen that two of the companies that uh, were in our two batches have acquired competitors of theirs. This is also a very, um, very interesting fact, and they have won numerous awards. So, you know, a lot of companies have won prize money. Uh, that's, that's just crazy. Sometimes almost more than they have um, gotten from the investment rounds. Um, so that's, that's one indicator, and so far all of them are in business, which is also very good. So we believe that we can, you know, keep up the momentum and we'll make sure that this stays the same for the uh, third batch as well. With more than 100 mentors that help coach, uh, as I said before, both uh, from within ProSiebenSat Alliance, but also external mentors that spend time with the, with the teams um, every week, um, you know, be it pitch trainings, be it functional expertise workshops, or whatever is necessary for the teams. In addition, we have the operational team, that's uh, me, for example, Ferdi, who's over there, and Robert, who's also there and uh, they will also be around for questions later. Uh, we basically spend time with the teams every day. So, but and what I always say is we have entrepreneurs with us. We have CEOs of companies with us and they are in charge of running their business. So we're not telling them what to do. We're always there for them if they need help. If they tell us what they want to work on, then our doors are always open and we're very helpful and we're trying to connect them with whoever they need to speak to. But I will never tell the startups what they have to do. Because if I told them what they had to do, then I could run the company myself. And that's not what I want. I want them to become more successful entrepreneurs, but they are still in the grass. So our third batch um, starts in April. Application is open now. It's open until the 16th of February. So if you're interested in applying, please do so. Go to our website or uh, talk to us 
afterwards, but also think about your friends, and because now you're smarter than probably some of your friends, because you know what I've been talking about. And if you think it's worthwhile passing the information along to them, then I would be very happy uh, if you did so, because coming back to what I initially said, I still believe the biggest problems with the problem we have with accelerators is that not everybody knows about accelerator programs in general. And so I'm always open for you know promoting other accelerator programs and whatever because I believe it's a good thing for the ecosystem. So this is our website address, uh, P7S1 for Pusinsat1 Accelerator.com, or go to our Facebook site. Uh, there you can always find update updates, information, photos, and you basically get a feel for what we're doing. So that's it. Um, but I'm more than happy to take a couple of questions if you have some, and maybe we can try the video again. That's skeptical. Go ahead. Okay. Um, you said you're taking a five percent uh, in equity. Uh, what is the requirement again to get into the program? Do you expect the startups to be to have a formal, um, <coughs> let's say, company already um, um, started or? Um, it's, it's, it's a very good question, and um, I would like to point out two things. Number one is the state that the company needs to, needs to be in. Is we need to see a at least a working prototype. So an idea, just a PowerPoint presentation and a business plan is not enough. So we need to see either a working prototype or a functional product. Because otherwise, we cannot really help you that much during this uh, three months. That's the first thing. The other thing is you need to have incorporated your company at least until the start of the program. Not until the application deadline, but basically until the 1st of April, you need to have either, I mean, for the Germans here, either Unternehmergesellschaft or uh, GmbH. And um, because that's the easiest way to do the transactions for us. I saw one of them there that looked interesting. Hey, ever? Mm -hmm. and First of all, maybe you could say one of your sentences about what it is, mm -hmm. and secondly, what your criteria are as far as match for the P7 S1. I mean, would you just take everybody? Anything great idea is sufficient, or does it have some? Must it have some relevance to? to yeah, I mean, you answering your first question, uh, pay ever is a payment solution that basically allows customers to pay on every website in Germany either by invoice or installment services. So even on websites like eBay or Amazon, where it's currently not possible to do that. Um, so that's um, it's also um, a company that's gaining a lot of traction right now, has acquired a lot of um, companies that want to integrate it onto the website. Uh, the customers love it, so it's a very interesting business model. And the second question is, um, Let's put it this way, the, we basically invest in all kinds of companies, except for the ones we don't have any knowledge about, which means no one within the team, within our team has any expertise from previous jobs or whatever, or uh, it's not connected to Cousins and Eins or media or entertainment or whatever. So that basically only leaves businesses such as biotech. Yeah. So I, we would not really invest in biotech companies. Only, I mean, if it, if it was ready and it was working and it was revenue generating and they, for some reason, would say, hey, this is, uh, we would like to be in the positive design lines, et cetera, I would probably say, okay, oh, come on in. Yeah, that's, uh, but the rest, I mean, as I said, B2B software, um, <coughs> be it whatever, back-end solutions for uh, games, uh, games platforms or whatever, perfect. Or uh, e-commerce, um, products or whatever, everything's uh, possible. I suspect that means we can find very detailed uh, CVs on every one of you. That's <coughs> yeah, and sometimes, I mean, on, on our website, you, you can find the CVs of the people that are, are running the program. But even, I mean, sometimes it's, I mean, just one um, quick anecdote uh, regarding the uh, talent tree guys. I've had uh, my own startup before. I mean, I was working with McKinsey for eight years, and before that, I started my own company, and that was in HR, and that was, you know, uh, employer branding and recruitment communication. So I had some kind of connection to this kind of business that, you know, has nothing to do with Pussy, has nothing to do with, uh, or no one else within the team had any connection to that, but I thought, hey, I know something about that, so why not give it a shot?
can you tell us something about um, the trends that you're seeing in the companies that come to you? Like, what are some of the, the key issues or problems or challenges that they have? Can you see a trend, or is it really? Um, I mean, you definitely see some kind of patterns in terms of applications that you get from companies. It's very rare, I mean, or let's put it this way, there usually are a couple of companies that are quite similar that apply. Yeah. So that, you know, it's just a trend or there, there, there was a trend when, for example, one company we invested in ticketed, and they did last minute ticketing. Last minute ticketing was fairly big uh, over the last uh, 12 months, so there were about five startups that applied. Uh, uh, to, to the program. So there are always some kind of clusters like this. Um, in addition, I mean, what I can give you as a recommendation or what I think is the biggest challenge because it's not so much about the idea. I mean, the idea is important, but what's even more important is that we understand the idea. Because most of the applications we get, and I'm not exaggerating, I have to say most of the applications we get, we have, hard, we have a hard time understanding what the business model is and what, what the product is. And not because we are uh, not that smart, but because it's simply uh, impossible. And um, so take the time to write us a short letter. You know, it's, it usually takes longer, but it's way more helpful. And another myth that I would like to um, bust here is uh, we're, we don't take a look at business plans. Uh, so business plan numbers doesn't matter because they all look the same. All kind of startups. I can basically, you tell me your startup and I draw your business plan here. Up on the wall, it's always the same. It's negative for the first two years, year three is positive, year four is super positive, and year five is 50% EBITDA margin. And that's basically what they all look like. And, um, but it doesn't really help us because either we believe there is a market. So if someone said it's a niche, like very tiny market, then we say, yeah, but this is maybe too small. But if someone says, I'm doing e-commerce for whatever it is, and we say, well, it's a big market, we believe everybody needs to buy new shoes, then we could say, yeah, the market seems to be big enough, so if the team has a cool idea and has a good business model and the founders are smart, then why not invest in it? Maybe not in the shoes business, but um, yeah, but, but even the shoes business, if it's, if it's smart, if it's somewhat uh, unique. It's not shoes. What's interesting for me is very startup founder would be interesting for me to know from you is what, what are you actually really doing for me? You say you mentor me on different areas that are you know, part of my business or that I might struggle with. Well, how exactly does this mentoring look like? Is there courses? How much time do you actually invest in it? Um, how we do it is we take in about six to eight startups per batch. And we have one person from within the Posim Zat Eins team that's responsible for only two to three startups. So I will personally cover two to three startups that make it into the third batch, and then I spend time with them, basically every day. We talk about what the problems are, what the development stage is that you're in, and then depending on that, I either say, okay, let's get back to the drawing board because I believe your business model sucks and we need to change that, because a lot of companies come in there and they think they want to do B2C businesses. And then we discover after a while, yeah, you need to get a lot of traction, you need to get millions of users, how are you going to get millions of users? Very complicated. But hey, the software that you build is awesome. So why not sell it to someone else who has, you know, deep pockets and is very willing to invest in it? And then we change the business model. I mean, that's one thing that could happen. The other thing is we just we work on your pitch so that you get follow-up investments, or we work on um, development issues that you have. So if you say, well, we are trying to, you know, make the payment process smoother or whatever, then we hook you up with uh, our development guys and try to coach you on that, or wh whatever it is that you, um, that you need help with. So it's very, very individualized based on uh, what the startup needs. We have some you know, more general workshop kind of sessions but when we believe uh, that's relevant for basically everyone. So something around, you know, um, how to raise capital, or uh, how to do search engine optimization, or these kinds of things. That's, then we do some kind of workshops, but usually it's more one-on-ones, or you know, the team with one or two experts uh, working on the issues that are most relevant. Okay, who these topics? Is that, is that more you guys, because you know what the problem is? Or yeah. Startup, or is that <coughs> it's both, actually. I mean, if we see very obvious problems, 
I would probably say, and I mean that's what I basically say to all teams, and maybe uh, uh, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, but I think our success proves that it's not completely off. Is your pitch is not perfect? I mean, you can you made it uh, past the you know the jury and past us, and so you made it into the program. Congratulations! But now let's start again, let's start all over again, and make sure that it's even more concise, better, um, smarter, and. Now let's start, uh, start to talk to investors. So, and but also it can be that you say, "Hey, I always wanted to do this. So, how can we achieve that? How do I best sell to BMW or whatever?" In one of the slides where you summarize a bit the program, you have like the initial year is like a 25, uh, 25,000 investment, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering, like, what is that? What does uh, budget is usually used for? Uh, in, is it equipment? Is it uh, whatever it comes up? I mean, it's. I mean, the startup can spend the money on whatever they want. So, I mean, there is the one big distinction. That's the teams that are from Munich and the teams that are not from Munich. The teams that are not from Munich usually spend it on rent and uh, you know traveling here and all these kind of things. Uh, the teams that are in Munich, they usually spend it on personnel. Yeah. So they recruit some some interns. They. Um, they uh, spend it on marketing. So if they have a product that's working, they do some kind of uh, Google campaigns or whatever. No, the reason is like, because like, what's typically the size of the team uh, usually because how would think? I would, I mean, we, the smallest teams we had were two people, but the majority of uh, the teams I would say are four-ish. Yeah, and I mean, we had teams up to 10 people. Is this money tax? Or you just get me to 25,000 euros? I mean, it's an investment. So you get the 25,000 euros, it's yours, it's, you don't have to pay tax on it. It's basically, it's, it's equity. It's converted to equity. Um, you said you take 5%. What's the um, the aim of Prozim with the accelerator? Is it an investment vehicle or? It's, it's actually, it's many fold. Number one is definitely, it's, it's a buzzword, right? corporate citizenship and you know doing doing something good and marketing and so on. So that, that's definitely one thing. But we could also not do it and people would still probably watch because even if they wanted to or not watch Um But uh, what's very important is you know connection to the startup scene and to uh, great people, to interesting ideas. And if you are in B2C which basically opening the door a little bit for you to uh, get a deal with Seven Ventures, our venture arm that does all our media investments into companies. So if you're big enough after the uh, Prozim.1 Accelerator or after a couple of, couple of years, months or whatever, then you can come back to Seven Ventures and says, you know what, here is two, three, four, five million in TV advertising and we get a certain stake in company for that. Mm -hmm. Or the other thing is, um, with uh, with all the B2B companies that we've had on the on the um, on the screen, uh, usually we buy their product afterwards. So we first have the accelerator program, try to help them, you know, connect with people within the group so that they can shape the product to our needs, and then afterwards we buy the product. As with uh, Talentry, they did the uh, the recruiting software, and now the entire group uses the software. Okay, we need to slowly wrap up. Yeah. Is that the final question? There's been some news lately about incubators and accelerators filling out the portfolio and reducing everything down to basically a little. <laughs> Why is that? I think, in, I think the incubator, I mean, first of all, I, you have to differentiate between incubators and accelerators. Incubators, I mean, you need quite substantial amount of cash mm -hmm. because it's, you know, you fund the company from the start through the... Uh, <coughs> up until the market entry or exit or whatever. So it needs quite some cash. And, but you have the same problem that we have with the accelerator. Uh, you only see the returns in five, six years. So you need some kind of stamina to go through this, uh, through this time phase. That's, that's the one thing. The other thing is that um, it's, you also need people and, uh, and time that you spend with, uh, with, um, with the companies. Therefore, you don't see that many accelerators that are privately funded because it's very, very costly. 
I mean, we have to provide the office space, we need to put up the investment money, and we have the team that's working with, uh, with the people. I mean, that's just time, and you need to, to make sure you have that, and you also need the mentors, and they uh, usually like it more or like it better to work with uh, accelerators that are uh, well known. So that's why I believe a lot of the privately funded uh, accelerators struggle on the one hand, and the incubators are just, you know, it's a numbers game because in the end we don't really know who's going to be the next superstar within our portfolio, and neither does an incubator. Mm -hmm. But if you need 15 companies to have one superstar, you have to fund 15 companies, and that's uh, quite costly. Okay. I have one more question. Uh, what is a typical, um, where do the companies that you support invest this 25,000 euros? What is the typical way? I mean, uh, for marketing, it's not a lot of money, and for development, uh, neither. So, what what is it uh, they want basically for this? For this for as, as I said, I mean, the companies that are not from uh, Munich, they usually spend it on rent. The other ones spend it on some kind of marketing, some kind of uh, interns. You know, uh, hire a couple of interns uh, during the program, and basically, it's it's not about the money. So, I would say, if we cut out the money, and you wouldn't want to come then then you probably shouldn't go, um, because it's not about the money. I mean, it's not a huge valuation. It's usually, I would say, it's fair, because given the state the companies are in, but it's about the, you know, we want to take some kind of weight off your shoulders uh, to, you know, make sure that you have enough money for the three months, and then we help you find someone else to invest even more money in you. So that's, that's basically the entire purpose of the 25,000 euros. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. One last thing, this is my, this is my Steve Jobs moment now. Uh, one last thing, uh, Ferdi and uh, Robert over there, they have little flyers and uh, things uh, that remind you of our website address and what's component of the program. So if you want to take some, just approach them or grab it, from, pick it up from the floor. Uh, <laughs> someone has dropped it somewhere. Thank you. <laughs>